Are you having problems with Japanese beetles just tearing up your garden and eating all your plants? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to take care of them, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name is Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. And in today's video, we're going to talk about Japanese beetles. First of all, what are they? What damage do they do to your plants? And then most importantly, how do you take care of them? So real quick, what is a Japanese beetle? Well, I've got one right here. They're um, in North America. They are an invasive species. Let's see if I can get this guy turned around. There, there we go. They're an invasive species that uh, is native to northern Japan. They showed up in America, oh, I think early 1912, something like that. They think they got shipped in in some irises. But you can see they kind of look like a little um, June bug. Just uh, kind of look a lot like a June bug, but just tiny little things. A lot of people think they are baby June bugs, but baby June bugs are actually grub worms. So that's what a Japanese beetle looks like. Now, they again, they're an invasive species in America, so there's not really any kind of natural predators for them, or very, very few. So nature doesn't do a good job of keeping them in check, and they can just overwhelm crops in your garden, your fruit trees, uh, some of those kinds of things. Let me show you what kind of damage they do real quick. All right, so this is a leaf off of one of my strawberry plants, and you can see it's been chewed up. It's got a bunch of little holes in it. That's what Japanese beetles do, and if you leave them unchecked, they'll just skeletonize the entire leaf. Now, if you only have like one or two leaves like this, and it's minor damage kind of like this, it's really not that big of a concern. The plant's going to recover from it just fine. But again, because they're invasive, and you there aren't really any kind of natural predators to kind of keep them in check. Sometimes they can just get overwhelming and they can completely tear up and kill a plant. Now let's talk about control real quick because that's really why you're watching this video, isn't it? All right, a couple ways you can control Japanese beetles. Um, the conventional ways would be things like uh, sprays, pesticides, those kinds of things. Highly suggest you stay away from pesticides. They do make some that are specific for Japanese beetles um, and, and they work. Um, you can spray those on the beetles and it kills them almost instantly, but you've got to stay on top of it. you got to do it non-stop, constantly, every day or every couple of days just to kind of get on top of that. And there's going to be more that come back within a couple of days and then you're going to have to do it all over again. And I really suggest you stay away from things like Seven. Um, Seven's a, a broad spectrum pesticide. It kills all kinds of bugs. It kills the good bugs too. And that's why you don't really want to use that because it'll kill your predator bugs that keep your aphids and those kinds of things in check. Um, and it will kill the pollinators that uh, ensure sure that your plants get pollinated real good and if you start using that stuff you're just you're never you're always going to have to use it because you're always going to have bugs coming in you haven't built up a population of predator bugs to keep those in check so really not good options in my book neem oil works pretty well um, if you spray it directly on the plants or directly on the uh, the bugs it can kill them as well but again it's a lot of work to stay on top of them you can also just carry like a cup of soapy water and knock them off into a cup of soapy water but that's a lot of work my favorite way to to take care of Japanese beetle is with Japanese beetle traps. This is the one I've got right here. This is a Spectracide brand. Uh, there's a couple of different brands that are made, but let me open this up and I'll show you kind of how this works. Pretty simple concept. Okay, this is what you've got inside the box. You've got two bags and uh, a little zip tie thing here, which I'm going to use to hang this bag up. So you've got two bags. You can use one. When one gets full, you can replace it with the other bag. We don't need that one right now. I'm going to toss it down. You've got uh, the hanger here. It comes. It's two pieces of plastic. Oh, let me get it apart. Oh, there's a piece of tape on it. And pretty simple. The way this goes together is you just slide it in like that. That's it. And then you've also got the bait station. Whoops. You've also got the bait station right here, which is the lure that attracts the uh, the Japanese beetles. Don't open this until you actually have the trap set, and you don't want to get this on you because it works very, very well. If you've got a lot of Japanese beetles in the area, as soon as you open this up, boy, they're going to start swarming into it, and you don't want them swarming on you. I mean, they don't bite. They won't hurt you, but still, you don't want Japanese beetles crawling all over you, so don't open this. Don't get it on you until you're ready to actually uh, set this. Oops, dropped part of my trap. Okay, so let's talk about how to put this thing together. Pretty easy. Um, I need to set some things down. Pretty easy. You just open the bag up. Put your uh, plastic pieces together. And you've got these little notches right here. And you've got little holes in the bag. The holes in the bag just go over those notches. 
All right, so I got my bag hung up on there. You might drop a pebble, to, pebble down in the end of this bag. That'll kind of keep it hanging straight up and down until it gets enough beetles in there to, to weigh it down. Keeps it from blowing in the wind too much. But the way that this works is you set this, uh, this trap, this lure trap, it just sets inside the plastic little slits right there. Well, you open it up, of course, first, and then sets just like that and it'll draw the beetles in. They come in to hit that, that lure and they'll hit that and they'll fall down inside the bag and they can't get back out and that's how it captures, catches them. So I'm going to use this little zip tie here to hang it. And just put it through the holes in the top of the deal and twist it off. Okay, I'm just going to hang this one on a, a shepherd's hook I've got out here in the yard. It's just a little ways from my garden, just, I don't know, 20 feet or so from my garden bed itself. And uh, pretty easy, you just, you're going to open this thing up. Again, you don't really want to get that on you because you don't want them drawn to you. And then set it in there. Oh, having a hard time holding on to it. And that's it. It is set and ready to go. Again, you might drop a, a rock down in there or something like that to kind of keep it hold. Now, if you've got a lot of Japanese beetles, as soon as you pretty much open that up, you're going to start seeing them come in. I don't have a whole ton of them around here this year, but let me take you up and show you a trap I set um, yesterday. No, day before yesterday, so it's been going for two days, and I'll show you how effective it is. Okay, to show you just how effective these things are, this is a trap I set up uh, two days ago. It's just... There's my strawberry plants right up there on the deck, and it's just on the hanging on the outside of the deck here. And this thing is already filled up to about there with Japanese beetles just in two days. And I don't have a ton of beetles around here. Um, there's, you know, I don't know, maybe we'll see them on camera here in a minute. There's beetles just coming to this thing pretty consistently here. Now, the objection I've heard to using these bags is that uh, they tend to draw in beetles from surrounding areas where you normally wouldn't have that many beetles. It draws in even more from your neighbor's house, from your, you know, blocks down the road, a mile down the road. I, who cares, really, honestly, when it comes down to it, these guys are an invasive species. If it draws them in and it draws them into the trap, who really cares where they come from? Here's been my experience with that. The first year that I owned this property, I had a ton of Japanese beetles, and I hung these traps out. And this bag filled up in about a week. It filled up to about there. You tie it off, you throw it away, you put, a, put the second bag on. Then it took about two weeks to fill up to about there. So I tied that off, I threw that away, I bought some replacement bags, hung those up, and it took, you might have seen that Japanese beetle flying around there, and it took about the rest of the season for that third bag to fill up. So I didn't have to replace that again in that year. The next year, I put the bags out. It took about three weeks for that thing to fill up to right about there. I tied it off, threw it away, put another bag up. It lasted me the rest of the season. Now, the last couple of years, I usually don't go through but maybe one bag a season. It's really decreased my population of Japanese beetles over the course of the last, uh, let's see, I've owned this property eight years almost. So over the course of the last, uh, you know, really it took about three years to get it down to, uh, to that level to where I only go through about one bag every season, something like that. Over the long haul, it's really made an impact on those things, though. So this is my preferred method to control them. All it traps is Japanese beetles. It doesn't harm any of the other bugs, any of the other wildlife, no pesticides, no chemicals. Well, I guess maybe there's a chemical in there, but it's not getting on your plants or anything like that. So this is the way that I prefer to control Japanese beetles. Well, hopefully this helps you out a little bit. You get some ideas on uh, what you can do if you're having problems with the Japanese beetles. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what your experience has been, uh, what's worked well for you if you're using something different, or if you've had experience with these kinds of traps, how well they've worked for you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, God bless.